In today's video, we'll be looking at how to tackle one popular layout design in bricks. The two layout design trends that I see a lot recently are the bento grid and we have the split screen layout where the content is within the box area but then the image is stretched to the edge of the screen and that's what we're going to be looking at how to do in today's video. I saw this layout about three years ago when Uboy showed how to do it in Elementor using sections and columns and I've done quite an extensive tutorial on it using the container feature that you can go and check it out. I'll leave a link to them in the description below. But in today's video, we're going to show how to do it within Bricks because someone asked me the question of how can he do it in Bricks. So I'll show you how to do the even split layout first within Bricks. Then in the future video, I'll show you how to do it when the layout is not even, you want it 60-40. But right now, we're going to show how to do it with a 50-50 split. So let's jump right in. So here we are on the Bricks edit page. The main things we need here are the container and some inner blocks. One is the content wrapper that wraps all our text and our button content. Then the other is the image wrapper that wraps the image itself. So we're going to be applying the styles mainly to the container and the blocks. To start applying the styles, we need to add some classes. If you have something like ACSS or advanced Thema, you can use the AutoBEM feature. But for this, we're going to be adding them manually. So the first one, I'll just call it split grid because basically it's going to be a 50-50 split and we're going to be using the CSS grid. So I'll just call it split grid. You can name it whatever you want. Then for the wrapper, I'll call it split grid content wrapper. I can ignore the rest. For the image, image wrapper. And for the main image itself, just call it image. If you like, you can add this container into a section, but the main thing you need to remember is that there must not be any padding. The container must flush to the edge of the screen. We don't need any padding because the image is going to be flush to the edge of the screen. Those padding will not allow it stretch to the edge of the screen. So if you are going to add a section, ensure that that section has the padding set to zero. And then make sure that the width of the container is set to 100%. So I'll do that here. So this is the grid. Under the style tab, make sure that the inline padding is set to zero so that everything can flush to the edge of the screen. So just make them linked, the inline padding zero. The width and the max width set it to 100%. So 100%. Max width, 100%. Now that we are done with the box model bit, now let's go ahead to the layout itself. So that's the grid properties. So go over to the content. First, we need to set it to display grid. Then the gap, we need to set the actual gap between the content to zero. We'll be using the grid template columns to create our gap, but then maybe the row gap, we can set it to a value. So the gap, you can use the two values. The first value is the row gap and the second value is the column gap. So I'll say the row gap should be maybe content gap. This is just a variable I created. Then the important thing is that the column gap should be set to zero, so zero here. So that's the first thing done. The next piece of the puzzle is the grid template columns. So what we're doing here is that we're dividing our container into five sections. The first two sections are the gutter at the two edges, followed by the box content area divided into two portions. Then finally, we have the gap in between them. And we're going to use the named grid lines to make everything easy for us. So rather than writing it here, it will be easier to write everything in the custom CSS. So under the style tab, we'll go over to the CSS portion and then custom CSS. The first thing we need to do is reference the class name. The shortcut is press R, then tab. That will say root. Basically is targeting whatever is highlighted as the class name. That is what this root is targeting. So within the root, First thing I need to do is define some variables. So I'll define the variable for the content width as well as the gutter and the gap. So I'll start with the gutter. So dd gutter. For that one, I already have a global variable set, which is called var dd con gutter. 
you could rem first the value like one rem or two rem or whatever, or you could create a global variable and then just reference that. Then for the gap, I also have a variable I've set up. So that's grid gap. So do the grid gap. Finally, the content width. For this, I also have a variable, but let me just write a normal value. So 1360 pixels. That's what I'm using in this example. So now that we have done with the variables, we can answer referencing it within the grid template columns. So I'll say grid template columns. Let me make each of them in a separate line. And we're going to be using the named grid lines to make everything easy. So the named lines we're going to be using are the full width. So when it is stretched to the full screen on both sides, it's called full. Then for each of the columns, so for column one, we have call one full and then call one for the boxed area. Then call two full and call two for the boxed area. Then in between them, we have the gap as well as the content area. So let me just write all the names first, then we add the values later. So we'll start by putting square braces. Then I'll define the first area, which is the full area. I'll say full. We have to define the start and the end. So see iPhone start. That is also the start of the column one stretched. So call one full start. So those are the two things that are starting there. There will be a value here. Then I'm going to the next line. This will now be the start of the box content area for the column one. So call one start. Then it's also the start of the content area. So content start. We have some values there. Next one is the start of the gap as well as the end of the column one. So gap start call one end call one full end. So that's the next one. Then we finish with the first column. Now we're going after the gap to the second column. So we have to end the gap as well. So gap end, then call to start as well as the call to full start. So that's the start of the second box column area. So we have to now end it. So the next portion is the call to end as well as the content area end that will have some values and finally we have the call to full end as well as the just the full end itself so we've named some areas don't worry the code will be in the description so you don't have to write this thing multiple times you just write it once just copy and paste and then you use it in your design so now let me start adding in the actual values. So for the first one is the gutters at the two edges, then the gap in the center. So let me just put in those values now. First is the gutter. So this is main max. We want it to be as small as the gutter, but then when it has enough space, stretch to push the content area to the center, basically. So that's min max var dd gutter comma 1fr that same value at the other end so copy to end everything here because that's between the box content area and the full content area that space we put the gutter so that's the gutter there then for the gap we just say var the gap so we have those main things all set up so now we need to set up the actual box content area. What that means is basically we take the main content area, which is 1360 pixels. We have to now subtract the gap from it and divide that value by two. That will give you the maximum value for the box content area for each of the columns. But then if it goes below 1360 pixels, then we have to now factor in the two gutters as well as the gap in between and the 100% of the width. So 100% minus the two gutters 
minus the gap, all divided by two. So those are the two values you need. So rather than writing it multiple times, I'll create another variable. So let me give you a space. The first one will be for our maximum width. So I'll say dd max box call width. That will be that. Then dd main box call. So I'll just input the values now. For the max box call width, all we have to do is say the content width minus the gap all divided by two. So that gives us the value. Then for the minimum value, all we have to say is 50% minus the gutter, because we have two gutters. So divided by two is only one gutter, then minus the gap divided by two. So that's why it's 50% minus gutter minus gap, which is divided by two, just that gap. So now that we have all of those, we can now reference those within our grid template columns. So all you have to do is say main reference the first one, which is var dd max box call, then comma var dd main box call. And we'll just close it. So let me copy this and we'll reference it in the other side as well. So we have everything all set up now. Now that we've finished the setup on our parent container, the next thing we need to do is set up the grid columns on our child containers. One thing we can do is for the children containers, I'll just say where root then the child. I want to give it a grid column. Now that we've set up these named template areas, it makes life a lot easier. Just say it should be set to content. So now what this is doing is that if we don't set up anything, it will just take up the content area. But once we set up something for the children items, then those ones take up whatever we set up. So this is basically the layout we should have. The last thing we need to just add here is simply put a grid auto flow of row dense. That's just to prevent any white space from happening later. You see what I mean? So now that we have all this set up, you can transfer this to your core framework if you like. Then all we have to do now is just reference the names that we have put here. So what do I mean by that? Go to the content wrapper. Let me go away from this so it make it bigger. So for the content wrapper now, make sure that the class name is highlighted. If we want it to be your column one, just come to the grid column and say call one. So now it's column one box. If you want it to be full, just put dash full and it will stretch to the edge of the screen, but we don't want that for the content. Then for the image, go to the image wrapper, make sure it's highlighted and just say call two and maybe say full. So now it's stretching to the edge of the screen. Let me save it and preview it. As you can see, the image stretches to the edge of the screen. The text content remains within the box content area. And that is exactly what we want. The final step is to now adjust all the spacing. So maybe you want this to be in the center. You don't want the image to be stretched to the full height of the image. You can use the trick of using absolute positioning, which I'll show you now. Let me go back. So for the content, I'll just say maybe a display of flex, direction column, make it centered. So that's it for the text. For the image, let me go to the image wrapper. Under the style tab, just go to layout, position, set it to relative. Then the image will be set absolutely positioned to the wrapper. So image, make sure the class name is highlighted. Position should be absolute. Then just set everything to zero. Then we need to set the width and height as well. So width 100%, the height 100%. Right now it's looking squished. So go to the content tab, change the object fit to cover. Then for portrait images, typically the main area is within the top. So you can see object position top, center, and you get this. Finally, we can just give the container a minimum height so that the image has some room to breathe. 
So you container, under the style tab, just say minimum height, I'll say it max 45 rem, comma, 90 SVH, save that. The last thing we need to check is that it is mobile responsive. So let's go ahead, check this, looks okay. I think on mobile, we typically want everything to stack one on top of the other. So one cool thing we can do here now is go to each of them. So the content wrapper, go to the content, simply change the grid column to content because that's why we use those named areas. So image wrapper, same thing to content, save this. And then finally you see the image right now is looking weird. Let's make it such that it goes back to static positioning on mobile. So go to the image style tab and then change the position back to static. So now the image takes up its actual height. So you can save these and then we can preview it on the front end. So open it, we get this layout. Let's inspect and minimize. You see, it goes the same way like our top layer. That's one beautiful thing about the CSS grid. You watch what happens. It is getting the same size, but once it gets to below the 1360 pixels that I set, it now follows with the gutter. That is one of the problems when you're using flex. Flex, you will not be able to put this gutter properly, but with grid, you can put in the gutter as you like. And once it gets to mobile, it switches to the mobile responsive way. And it also has that row gap that we set up. It has the gutter we set up and everything just works beautifully. So that's it. I'll leave a link to the code in the description below. I hope you like this video. Let me know in the comment section if you have a better method. In the future video, I'll show you the more complicated one. If you want it to not just be 50-50, but you want it maybe the first one should be 40%, the other one should be stretching to 60% or something like that. I'll show you that in the next video. So stay tuned. <laughs>